Beneath the cold, gray waters of the North Sea lies a forgotten world, a land that once thrived with life, laughter, and firelight, now buried under centuries of silence. Long before the islands of Britain stood apart from Europe, there was Doggerland, a vast and fertile plain stretching from the English coast to the Netherlands, connecting people, animals, and entire cultures. Today, it's known only to fishermen, scientists, and the occasional diver who pulls up a bone from the deep, a silent reminder that an entire civilization once lived where the sea now reigns. The story begins not in a lab or a museum, but on a fishing vessel. One cold morning as trawlers hauled their nets from the depths, they found something strange tangled among the cod and crabs, a mammoth's tusk, smooth and pale as ivory. Then came more, antlers, stone tools, and bones carved by human hands. Each catch brought pieces of a world no one remembered. At first, no one understood what they were seeing. How could the bones of mammoths and humans be found together under the sea? But as archaeologists began to study the finds, the truth slowly surfaced this seabed had once been dry land. 12,000 years ago, the last ice age was ending. The great glaciers that had covered northern Europe were melting, and rivers carved their way through the plain. The climate warmed, and in the space now swallowed by the North Sea stretched a rich green wilderness, a land of rivers, forests, and meadows where mammoths roamed and humans hunted with spears tipped in flint. They called it Doggerland not because of dogs, but after the Dogger Bank, a shallow stretch of seabed named centuries later by Dutch fishermen. But to those who lived there, it was paradise. Imagine it, gentle rolling hills blanketed in mist, birch trees swaying in the wind, and vast wetlands teeming with life. Tribes of early humans followed herds of reindeer and elk, gathered berries along river banks, and fished the lakes that dotted the plains. They built shelters of bone and hide, lit fires beneath the stars, and told stories around them, stories that would be washed away by time. Archaeologists today call them hunter-gatherers, but their world was far from primitive. Among the artifacts found on the Dutch coast was a small tool, flint blade glued with pitch made from birch bark. To modern scientists, it was a revelation. It proved that the people of Doggerland understood complex chemistry and engineering. They could shape materials, create adhesives, and plan multi-step processes. These were not mindless nomads, they were inventors, problem solvers, thinkers. But Doggerland's glory was destined to be short-lived. As the glaciers melted, the sea began to rise slowly at first, then faster. Each century, the ocean crept higher, swallowing the rivers, turning valleys into lagoons, and forests into swamps. For generations, families watched the coastline shrink, believing perhaps it was the will of the gods, never knowing that the end of an ice age had sealed their fate. By 8000 BC, Doggerland was already breaking apart into a patchwork of island. Life continued in pockets, smaller villages, shorter hunts, fewer herds. But the people adapted, moving with the waters, clinging to what was left of their world. Then, one day, the sea rose not in inches, but in a single devastating way. Far to the north, off the coast of Norway, a massive underwater landslide known as the Storega Slide sent a tsunami racing across the sea. When it reached Doggerland, walls of water crashed across the plains. In an instant, villages vanished, rivers reversed their flow, and forests were ripped from the earth. If you were standing on the shore that day, said archaeologist Vincent Gaffney, it would have been a very bad day for you. For the survivors, there was no returning. The sea had claimed the heart of Europe, and within a few centuries, nothing remained but waves in silence. Yet Doggerland's story did not end there. Every tusk, every stone tool, every scrap of bone that fishermen bring up today is a whisper from that drowned world, a reminder that even civilizations without cities can leave behind legacies written in mud and memory. For thousands of years, Doggerland slept in darkness beneath the waves until modern science found a way to hear its heartbeat again. In the 20th century, as oil companies began drilling in the North Sea, they conducted vast seismic surveys, sending sound waves through the seabed to map the layers below. Buried in that industrial data was a treasure trove no one expected, a ghostly outline of valleys, rivers and lakes, the lost landscape of Doggerland. When archaeologists and geologists finally studied the seismic readings, the past came into focus. The seabed wasn't flat, it was full of life's traces. Hills once crowned with forests, ancient river channels that had fed villages, the echoes of a world erased by time. Using those maps, researchers reconstructed 18,000 square miles of land, a virtual resurrection of a continent that no one had seen for 8,000 years. They could trace the movement of rivers, the shores where hunters camped, and the valleys where mammoths once grazed. But finding the landscape was only the beginning. Now, scientists wanted to find its people. Along the Dutch and British coasts, amateur beachcombers began uncovering relics washed up by storms, flint tools, fragments of animal bone, and even the skull of a young Neanderthal. Each find told part of Doggerland's story, its hunters, its foragers, and the fragile balance they shared with a changing world. We have a wonderful community of citizen archaeologists, said Dr. Saja van der Vaartverschoof of the National Museum of Antiquities. They walk the beaches every day, finding the fossils that time returns. Among their discoveries was a small piece of flint sealed with birch pitch, a handmade glue created through complex heating. 
It was a revelation. Doggerland's inhabitants were engineers. They could plan, calculate, and create with purpose. The find shattered the old belief that early humans were primitive, showing that intelligence and adaptation had long been part of our story. But for archaeologists, the greatest mystery was what still lay beneath. If Doggerland had once been Europe's heart, could its final villages, its hearths, its tools, its burials still lie preserved under layers of silt? To find out, teams from the University of Bradford joined forces with engineers and climate scientists using magnetometry, a form of ground-penetrating radar that measures magnetic fields beneath the seabed. It's the same technology used to locate hidden ruins on land, but now, for the first time, it was being applied deep underwater. From their control stations aboard research vessels, scientists watched real-time readings on glowing screen. The data revealed subtle distortions, shifts in sediment, traces of riverbeds, and strange anomalies that might, just might, be the remains of ancient campsites or burial maps. If we're lucky, said PhD researcher Ben Ermston, we might even find Midden's ancient rubbish dumps filled with shells and animal bones. To us, that's gold. It tells us how these people lived, what they ate, and how they adapted as the world drowned around them. But time is running out. The same North Sea that once erased Doggerland is changing again. Massive offshore wind farms are being constructed across the region part of the United Kingdom's drive toward renewable energy and a carbon-neutral future. Noble in purpose, yes, but they will soon make large sections of the seabed inaccessible forever. Archaeologists race the clock, scanning what they can before turbines rise and history vanishes beneath progress. To them, Doggerland isn't just an ancient land, it's a warning. It reminds us how fragile civilizations truly are. That rising seas, shifting climates, and human choices can rewrite the map of the world in a heartbeat. When you look across the gray waters of the North Sea today, it's hard to imagine that beneath those waves once stood green fields, rivers, and families who watched the horizon just as we do now. They laughed, hunted, built fires, and then the ocean came. And somewhere under that cold expanse, in the quiet silt and sand, their footprints remain waiting for the day when the world will finally remember them.